online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another installment of the Falling Skies After Show for Season 4, Episode 10. Normally, this would be the season finale, but it is not. Mm -mm. We are drawing straws today, a.k.a. voting, no, drawing from a hat. It, or a skull. It looked like a skull that they were drawing from. It's creepy. <laughs> um, I have rigged it, so that way I am your fearless leader. Here tonight, Phil Svitek, Nando was not fixed in the drawing. Instead, we did draw Roya's name out of a hat I to join me tonight. I am the lucky one. I am lucky. Nando will be back for the two-hour season finale. I can't believe it's already there. I'm st still at shock. We get two more episodes. To, in w one more night, two more episodes. Yeah, so but be that happy means it's almost that. over, which is really upsetting. Yeah, but normally it would be over tonight, but it's not. Um, a lot to talk about. Let's start with something that isn't happening in the ghetto camp. Lexi's struggle. We knew Lexi would not go away. Yeah, I, well, when we saw the preview of her talking to Ben, like, the previously on Falling Skies, and they showed her and Ben, I'm like, oh, okay, she's going to come back. She's going to be in this episode. And I'm really glad they brought her in, because even last week, I was, where's Lexi? What does her training look like? I had all these questions, and they were actually answered in this episode. She came back at the right time. Yes. And um, Shadow Place, what, what, is that the official term for um, when, oh. when, when uh, the Ashveni meet up? Shadow Plane. Shadow Plane, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it let them down this time. Did they really not realize that Lexi could do that as well and join them in on the conversation? It's to like, answer your question, they didn't. Apparently not. <laughs> um <laughs> But backing up real fast, just just for a moment, I, I, I got to say, um, you know, that may not have been the smartest move, but I thought the lesson that he was teaching, I thought, I thought that was, um, philosophically, I thought it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth, you know, everything, everything is all about gravity. And atoms. And that's, well, that's what it comes down to. It's forces bonding to each other. Um, and, you know, your role is to reverse that and push things. I, I want to know when they were deciding what his voice was going to sound like, if they went through different things, and just for, for giggles, if they tried different voices, like the sound of Elmo saying that voice. Because the way they, they had they it played, Elmo. I know, but it would have been amazing to hear, because the way he was just saying those lines, it sounded like a scientist talking, and we were learning, as if we were on Cosmos and we were watching that, and be like, Adams, everything's pulled together. And it's like, That's why I loved it, because it, it, was, it was, you know, forget that the Ishveni are absolutely evil, but f philosophically, it was very beautiful, mm -hmm. and you know, I th I think Lexi, right then and there, after she had done it, of you'll grow, just the word stronger, right, right off the bat, s symbolizes power. You know, there's there's more of a meaning to it. Like, mm -hmm. okay, well, um, for peace, why do I need strength? You know, you don't really hear peace and strength. Like, there's, I don't know if the two you can associate with them, but there's probably a better word. And seeing what she did with the forest, mm -hmm. that also isn't the most symbolic of peace, you know? Mm -hmm. um, had, like, she created uh, flowers, like, you know, if you've ever seen the movie Noah, where flowers just randomly appear, mm -hmm. then perhaps, you know, Lexi could have gotten behind the, uh, oh, I'm creating peace. But what she did in the forest is not actions of peacefulness. Which she should have picked up on. But... Well, she did, because then that's why she ultimately snooped in on the conversation well because she had that dream in the beginning remember about ben and how he was coming you'll be like look lexi you were right you fixed me and he had all the alien transformation going on and she's like ben no uh, you're right <laughs> you're, no you're right you're absolutely right you know um yeah I, I thought for a minute it was going to be ben's dream but it was lexi's dream and you're absolutely right in that sense so i think the pieces were fitting together mm-hmm you know, to, to make was, all this align. Her human side was finally coming out, which the uh, RoboCop 
I like to call him the robo alien. Ashveni knew that her human side was coming out, brother. as he said. The br yes, brother. brother, brother, knew that it was happening, and so he wanted to end Lexi just to cover their own butt about it. Because well, if she were to go, like he mentioned, if she were to rebel, we would be in big, big, big trouble. Big trouble. They wouldn't. They, they could end the whole war. And unfortunately, she is rebelling. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is very exciting because we get that confirmation. She could, she's a, we always knew she was a key, but now we get it from the, what is the saying? The lion's mouth? The, the horse's mouth? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Lion. Oh. Um, either way, it, I think it's very exciting. And you, also in that sense, you, yeah, if you can't control a weapon, you know, mo most weapons tend to be not, uh, have free will. Mm -hmm. um, then it, it is, of course, an anomaly, and what a huge anomaly it is in this sense. And they would have to shut it down. Did you, because we were talking about it during the episode, how did you think he, the Jedi one, I'm sorry, the brother. Brother. Just call him brother. <laughs> There's two brothers. How do you know which one I'm talking about? Okay, one's, er, we're going to talk, one's Hermano, the weaker one, and then there's brother. So okay. Hermano and brother. All right, and Hermano, is that the one that's burned? The weaker one? Hermano is dead. Okay, well, he had a way to end Lexi. Yes. What did you think that meant? Because when I heard it, I thought it was something more, but I'll let you first because I asked the question. <laughs> um, I think he did have a way to end Lexi. I just don't think because he didn't really want to do it, this wasn't actually the way he would have done it if push came to shove. This was the softer way. Was it the... Because when I saw the scene of how he was going to end it, it reminded me of, of My Men. When Lenny and Kenny, or Lenny and, um, is it Kenny? I didn't, the, I don't oh. know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, for those that have read the American literature of that. Uh, okay, then I won't go down the reference, but either way. You would say, I mean, this, this this show does make amazing references, and we'll talk about Flight of the Navigator okay. in a moment. I thought that would actually be more prevalent than it act, ended up being. But anyway, go ahead. Well, Lenny has to be put down, and I don't know what his friend's name is. He's his main character. Steven, do you remember what his name is? I think Steven reads. I believe he reads. I don't remember. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> he just said, I don't remember. But you know what? That just means I didn't They're read. They're best friends, basically. George. Oh, remember Bugs Bunny? I'll hug him and love him, call him George. That's why. What? Lenny, what, oh, Lenny and George. Yeah. Okay, so Lenny has put George down. That's what it is. Sorry, guys, about the weird reference. That that whole angle of this Fenny having to put down Lexi reminded me of that scene and how he doesn't want to do it, but he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was weird that he had he was going for the chokehold that way. Well, I, I, th I think it could have gotten easy. I think he was doing it because it could have gotten confused as a... Uh massaging you know <laughs> so he touches his daughter like to massage her like mm, good job here's a pat on the back no but you don't th like it's a it's a it's a sign of especially i think he's a trying to adapt to like human things in that moment and like putting your hand on your child's shoulder is not that weird it wasn't going for her shoulder it was going for her neck it was literally like where her ears were which he was going to try and just crush her skull okay i, I understand or that. break her neck so it was just Okay, I ended, I'm started, not reading too deep into <laughs> I'm it, okay? Sorry. I just thought that he, because he said there's a way that he can end her. My point of this is I thought there was a plug. Like, maybe if you ripped her necklace off that it would take her powers away or something like that. And that's what I took out of his conversation with his brother. Fair enough. And Either I, way, I just knew she was going to destroy him. Yeah. First and foremost. And so I didn't care any of his attempts because I knew they would be in vain. So which they happy. were, and he is gone. So happy that he's gone. Uh, we'll talk about her returning to the camp at the end, because it happens at the end. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the camp. Let's start with young Mam. And um, for me, we had a big... I, I thought we were going to get a flight of the Navigator uh, reference. For, it's a 19... not It's a 1980s movie mm -hmm. about a kid flying an alien spaceship. It could still happen. It could. Probably not, but it could still happen. <laughs> To be fair, as this developed, I was really hoping, um, I was forming a fantasy alien league, and I was hoping for Matt and Pope, because Pope fought so hard, not that I want to get into Pope's thing right now, but Pope and Matt fought so hard to be a part of this mission, and they're not. Mm -hmm. um, well, you had a question about, you wanted me to bring it up, about Matt finding out how to 
find things in the ship and how how does he know that's what you were asking well that's what that's why i brought up flight of the navigator because in flight of the navigator he just intrinsically knows how to navigate the alien spaceship here it seems that matt for the most part knows. you know he's just testing things out but he sort of knows and you made the reference like yeah it's like a kid testing out a car except for the most part you understand the principles of a car you know you, you, you've ridden one multiple times, you know, one would assume, in your lifetime, and so it's, it, the two aren't comparable to me. Well, from what Matt was watching, he kind of could see, okay, you, you yank on this, you yank on that, maybe that will do something for the ship. So maybe that was his way of driving a car. You see it, you do it. But to me, I honestly, when he was alone in the ship, I'm like, oh, he's going to somehow figure out the ship, he's going to make it move, and he's going to crash into something just like a kid would with a car. When they get into the truck, they're like, ooh, I'm driving, oh, and I crashed into the shopping center right away. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. Fair enough. <laughs> How do you, oh, you know, as a, as a kid that's 13, he's, he's rebelling against his father. Um, the sons just in general are not, uh, they're not, not, I don't wanna say upright, they're not model citizens. You, th there's a lot of turmoil. Just in general with the family. It's almost selfishness. On Matt's part? All of them. All three of them. Okay. I would agree. Except for Hal, maybe. But although I, I guess throughout the season, he, he has been a little selfish. But Matt specifically, um, is this a turn? Because we know it's not the series finale Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's the season finale. Is Matt going to go down a more rebellious path? I think he's going to go down more of a soldier path. I don't think he's going to be rebellious. I mm, We'll define rebellious. Do you mean going against orders for the good of a cause or being like a pope and kind of, well, I think pop, pope rebels for a good cause. But what, I don't know. I think it's just one of those things where if he he's trying to do the right thing, but if he's unpredictable, then it could have dire consequences. And at the end of the day, he is only 13. What, is he, what does he really know? What does anybody know, really? Well, at this, this point, world. none of them have a trade. Like, unless you were, unless you're like the older people mm -hmm. that have been to school and and you know sort of have an understanding in a trade. He went to kindergarten. He's good. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> like he knows not like you don't know anything except for maybe history that your father taught you, but that's. It's helpful, but it's not. Well, actually, in season, I believe it was season one, they did go to school, quote unquote, school. Okay, it's. I'm sure they weren't set up for, like. They were trying to live a normal life while running. Like from talk aliens. about talk about the problems of the educational system in the United States currently. <laughs> That's better than what they probably had. Just just saying. So you have a level of comparison. Anyway. Well, I don't think education matters anymore in this world. I don't think having an education matters. So he can yes pick up no. on it. Yes and no. Okay. Um, either way, I mean, he was, he, was, he was smart enough and he was the catalyst for coming up with the drawing and straws, a.k.a. let's pick names out of a hat. <laughs> yeah. Um, good plan obviously didn't work because it just became rigged. <laughs> but no one knows that, but Hal? No, I mean, uh, Tom. And? And Anne. Yeah. So. True. Maybe Pope. You think Pope knows? No, because he made that comment. Even after all this, he still got picked. Yeah. He might have like an idea, but... but he's not going to say anything. Well, he has no proof. And I don't think... What is he, he going to say? I took his name out of the hat? <laughs> There's no way you could be called. <laughs> I don't think Pope would do anything against Tom in this case. Because Tom pulled his, placed his name in it after Ben got pull, pulled. So he was doing a fatherly thing. I don't think Pope would hold that against Tom. If he found out. Fair enough. Well, I, I we're, we're going to talk about the love triangle, but since we're naturally segueing into Pope, um, and they are my da dynamic fantasy pick for this mission. Um, Pope and Matt. <laughs> Pope made such a great argument to Weaver, and they had that f great fight. And I just feel like... Obviously, obviously, Pope is going to do something amazing. And I don't know if he's going to be a martyr per se and, like, at, you know, his life is going to end. 
But at the very least, in the season finale, he's gonna he's gonna bl- do something that blows us away. I mean, just just remember when he did um when when they took down the fence. He that was part of the reason why, you know, everyone doubted him. But he mm-hmm. wanted to be the hero, and he was the hero. And all in all, he didn't quite get the recognition. And Sarah, as great as she is, um, and I want to hear your thoughts on uh, some of this. Uh, as great as Sarah was, and she she rejuvenated him. And and Weaver says, you know, hey, have hope. She'll she may come back. I don't know how good she really ultimately is for Pope because she's kind of a negative person. Yeah, but in the end, it was Pope that drove her away because of the whole, he called her an addict because he saw her with the pills. And he's like, oh, because your wrists hurt and you're back to pills, even though you were supposed to dump those, in which they did the previous episode of that one. And he called her an addict. She's like, I'm not an addict. This was just aspirin. And that's why she left because of what he called her. So in a way, I feel Pope was pushing her away. Mm-hmm. I think she was good for him. You know what Pope and Sarah should have been doing? What should they have been doing? They should be... I mean, when this when this war is all over, right? And they can have a normal life. Mm-hmm. You know what the one thing they don't have to do? What? They don't have to drive around like a couple trying to get the best deals. Right? Because it isn't annoying, right? In this day and age, you just want to save some money. And so you, you clip coupons, you go shopping, trying to get the best deal, and you end up shopping for 12 hours when it, you could have done it in one. Mm-hmm. The solution, Walmart has the, the ultimate solution. It's amazing. Just go to Walmart, shop, get everything you need. You know, And that's the great thing about Walmart. It's got what you need. Mm-hmm. It, it's, you know, it's not like a very finite store. It's got whatever you can think of, they have. So you shop, you get it. Um, in this case, Pope and, and Sarah, they're good. You know, they, they're, they get everything. They drive home. They put in their receipt. They go to walmart.com slash savings catcher, and they put in their receipt. And through Ashveni technology, is, no, Volm technology, because we're the good guys, mm-hmm. um, magically it finds the savings in your area, and boom. You are the difference of that. You get an e gift card and right to Walmart, so you can do more shopping as a couple. As a couple, oh, that's or sweet. singularly, you know, so, uh, as, as we find, you know, uh, you have to be sufficient onto yourself Aww. in the episode. We learn, I hope so. So, you can do it back. as a couple, you can do it singularly, it doesn't matter. The point is, you save money and you save time. That's a win win. Definitely so, is. Again, for those of you listening. Uh, just go to just go to Walmart, shop, then take your receipt, go to walmart.com slash savings catcher, put in that receipt, and you will get the difference. It's that easy. It's that amazing. Um, I've been I've been using it. Yeah? Yeah. Getting your own little gift card? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, what did I buy? I, I probably don't want to say what I buy. I buy stupid stuff. Okay. I was a little worried <laughs> of where you're going with that. <laughs> I probably bought shaving cream. Okay, shaving cream's important. That's good. Yeah, you know. Matt won't need shaving cream for a little while, though. Uh, Maybe, actually. He, you know what? These guys, the, 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 everyone in Falling Skies, they just need a nice Walmart trip. We need some supplies for them. They've, they've had it rough for a couple mm-hmm. of years at this point. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, with... I mean, I don't, I don't have much else to say about Pope for me, but I, I want to hear your thoughts because I don't think you got the finish. Uh, no, his speech was very heartfelt. Uh, the fact that he said, as you mentioned to Weaver, no one's going to miss me. No one's, I should go. I need to be the hero. I think that's why Sarah should come back because he was a hero to her. He is, saved her so many is times. Is Weaver correct in the sense of like, don't do the, you know, Weaver had, for lack of a better term. Was Weaver going to kill him? I don't think we he had the rock and he was ready and Pope's like, no, 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 no. Okay, here. It wasn't my name. It was your guys' names. He was certainly going to hurt <laughs> him very badly. But um, when 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 finally Pope kind of gives his speech, do you think Tom, do, do you think Weaver was just like, you know what? That's like, don't, don't be like that. That's uh that's a stupid, I'm not wording this in the best of ways, but basically like stop, stop pitting yourself. You know what I mean? And get over it. We're all in the same boat. Mm-hmm. And and he didn't outright say it, but like that 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 was the sentiment I felt. And that's why when uh, when Pope wasn't picked, even though it was fixed, um, 
they kept cutting really fast, so I was trying to get like people's expressions. That's mm -hmm. why I don't think Weaver, you know, he was like, okay, I'm glad that didn't happen. Because if 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 he really got behind Pope's idealism, then he would have been like, you know what, let's figure out a way to get Pope on this ship. But we don't know if uh, Weaver put the names back into the hat, do we? We didn't see that. Doesn't so matter. He... Tom pulled his out of right. his... Right. No, but I'm just saying, because you mentioned that Pope might already know that uh, that Tom fixed. fixed it. So if Pope knows that and Weaver knows that, Weaver definitely knows that Tom fixed it because of that. At the very point. least, he can assume that Tom probably put his name in 50 times. That's <laughs> true. So, yeah, but I, I liked how Weaver was actually listening to Pope during Pope's little speech that he had like yeah. about how they need you. And yeah. he's like, wow, you're right, buddy. Um, I give Pope a lot of credit in this episode. Yay. Mm. Team I, Pope over here is happy to hear that. Yay. <laughs> he he really stepped up this time. Um, let's talk about the love triangle. Um, I'm trying to think throughout human history how many brothers have fought over the same girl because obviously that's made a reference. There's a lot, isn't there? I'm trying to think of famous ones, not like, y y y I don't know. I was going to say your brothers. Do you have brothers? Yeah. Okay. But I don't think they ever fought over the same girl. So you know, so you... So you're unaware. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, it got pretty heated. I, I, I liked Hal's argument of the, you know what? Everyone has spikes. You know, that as, using that as a metaphor, mm -hmm. you know, um, for basically temptation. But I didn't like how he says, it's easy to say when Ben apologized, it's easy to say that. Because to me, that felt like a foreshadow of being like, you need to show me that you don't care for Maggie. I mean, by show... Go out and do something stupid. Get killed. I really read into that. <laughs> Is that what that meant? Hal wants him to... Yeah, I think he does. Uh, okay, well... <laughs> but, so... I'm you're trying like, to figure... You're a crazy girl over there thinking... Uh, <laughs> love is crazy. This we know. Um, Tom, when, when Tom speaks with Hal, he says that line of, ultimately, it's not up to you guys, it's up to Maggie. So... Before we get into the, the brothers' full quarrel, what do you think Maggie does want to choose? Is it the spikes for her? What is not? Maggie, what I want her to choose, or what, what I think she... she actually is going to choose? Let's start with that and then return to the former. I think she's going to choose Ben because of the spikes being inside her, and it just draws that energy towards Ben, as she mentioned. I like how she said, it's just physical. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. It's not spiritual or whatever. It's just, it's, at least it's just physical. Physical is a great thing to have. I'm just saying. <laughs> so. Not if you're half. That's not what you say to someone that you're dating or your significant other. Oh, it's it's just physical, honey. Don't worry about it. That's why I'm cheating with you on this guy. Because it's just You satisfy physical. me physically yeah. and emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> like, good job, Maggie. Who wants to, oh, now I understand why Hal, or yeah, Hal was so upset with that. That line, because I'm like, she didn't say she wanted to be with Ben, <laughs> but then, valid point. Um, but what I really want is for her to be with Hal, because that is just different, weird, yeah, the age and like already been used and tainted. Okay, speaking of that, with this, we're jumping all over the place in particular, but um, towards the end, Hal says maybe she'll just end up with Matt. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm saying Maggie's... it jokingly, but that's that's of significance. It could happen. There's no, um, you know, age limit or age minimum in this new world mm -hmm. for dating and do what you want. Well, as long as he grows up eventually. They, He's they... growing. Give him a moment, okay? <laughs> Let him figure out how to control himself, and it will become physical, hopefully. Uh, five more years for him? Well, the rate Maggie's going, maybe less. Well, because she was only with Hal for like what three years, two years. Well, I'm saying in order for him to be 18, I don't think 18 matters anymore. <laughs> it, it there's does. no structure. There's no law. Um, I was, you know, I, I liked Hal's reactions, and I felt I gave him a lot of credit throughout this. For you know, he was obviously very upset, but he could have gone a different route. He could have gotten very upset, started throwing punches, mm -hmm. started certainly yelling at Maggie, but he didn't. Um, you know, he was not accepting, but he was certainly hurt. And then he ends up on the ship talking with Ben and they hug. And I was, 
I didn't quite know what to feel then and there. What was he doing? I thought he was going to, like, blindside him and just, you know, Matt, uh, not Matt. Ben has that great line, thank you for not punching me. And I thought that was right then of, like, how would uh, sarcastically say, oh, you're you're welcome. Then they would hug and then mm -hmm. punch right there. Yeah, because I thought he was doing something to, I don't know if it was a control panel or what, but he was looking at something versus looking and waiting for Ben to come up the ladder. He was looking and maybe doing something. I thought he was going to knock Ben out and put him in whatever that container was or well we know area. we know we know Hal is the one that made the bombs for the most part mm -hmm. um because that's when ben comes and he's you know hey i need to talk to you that's that's what um hal is doing yeah we've seen so, him twice with the bombs with him and with maggie and then with ben again yeah. so is he tampering with the bombs and if so in what way and why would he do that ultimately it's and not for the sabotage? greater good yeah because he has that he also has that line where he says um I'm doing the right thing, you know, because she comes up to him. And she says, I saw you put your name into the to the hat. And he says, I do the right thing. And yeah. So was that a lie? Is he doing the right thing? What about the bombs? Was, was, I don't He's know. up to something. He has something that he manipulated in there. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe he's just trying to figure out what's on his mind and how to talk to Ben. Could be yeah. it. Could be simple. It could be it. But every shot has a meaning. So why was he facing that way? And then he turned. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just... His earlier reactions to this whole thing, I could buy. I don't know what to think of, the, you know, right at the end, that speech. Um, I know. And it's and it's made even uh, worse, for lack of a better term, because Tom's there and he's, he's like, oh, I'm glad you guys made up. And then... Hal's coming down, he sees Maggie, Maggie doesn't know how to react, just like, I don't know how to react, mm -hmm. and he just doesn't care, you know? Well, and then that's when we get the rest of it. But. Well, and especially when Hal walks in on Ben and Maggie kissing, and Maggie says, worst goodbye ever. Maggie, come on! Why do you say that? That's just terrible to say, like, was she saying worst goodbye ever because she got interrupted making out with Ben, and they didn't get to have a really good goodbye time, or was it because... Hal saw them and interrupted their time, and therefore they couldn't have a really good time. To Maggie's point, wait, because you said good... the same thing twice. I know. Ultimately, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you weren't saying yeah. the same, and then you said the same and thing then I twice. Twisted it. I know. <laughs> so, but still, neither. Why? Why would she say that line? Worst goodbye ever. Be um, for think... Ben and Hal, because uh, yeah. she's not going up on the ship. Yeah, it could be for. Let's go with that, Ben and Hal. That's the best one you've deciphered so far. I don't know. I mean, I think it's meant more as... I don't think you necessarily have to read into it too much. I think I it's know. kind of meant as a throwaway line of like, oh my God, what did I just do? There's just so much sexual tension on this episode. In this episode. With them in particular. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to get resolved. Mm -hmm. Which we'll see next episode. Um, another love, lover's quarrel. Uh, the new honeymooners. <laughs> slash not. Tom Mason and Anne, his wife, his official wife. Congratulations. Yay. Um, first official um, day. Not so good. Nope. Hey, honey, I'm going to go to the moon, and I might die and never come back. So I love you. To be fair, I, I give I give Anne so much credit because as she's saying, you understand how that ridiculous that sounds? She makes it sound so ridiculous. You're getting on a spaceship to go to the moon. You understand how that ridiculous that sounds? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty ridiculous. But he's meant to do it. He feels, he even cried saying, I am meant to go to the moon. I feel it. I mean. I... That's so, to me, that was probably the most childish I've seen Tom in the series. Because that was a very immature, compared to Hal, whose brother is cheating on him, or not cheating on his girlfriend's cheating on with his brother, Hal had more maturity than Tom does about going to space. Why does Tom, like, why does Tom, does he really not trust anyone else to come through with this mission? I mean, I, I feel like, well, I, I feel like, right, the argument was made, like, we should pick the best person for the job. And okay, uh, I don't know what qualifies the best person for this job. If it's a bombs expert, I think that makes Hal because mm -hmm. he made the bomb. And then okay, piloting, I guess I guess it would be Dingen. Yeah. So, or maybe someone else. Like, what qualifies Tom as the best person? I think just if you might as well do the job right, do it yourself. 
I guess. And forget other people around you. Again, but be I, selfish. What do you? What did you think of Anne's, Anne's rebuttals? Because she was, I thought she was quite smart in the in, in the sense like, hey, you know, people will lose faith in your leadership if all you, you you don't ever listen to them. It's unfair. I thought she said that when he put his name in the. It was. It was before. It. Yeah, it was before. Yeah, it was right around that time. I. I mean, I can see where she's coming from, but I think she's saying that because she knows she can't change Tom's mind. Once Tom's mind's made up, he's set. Yeah, but I, I thought that was a, I thought that was significant. I mean, I, I do believe she's right. And you know what? If people, they've always gotten behind Tom, but ultimately he has to, he has to, as a leader, be able to get their input. And you know what? You, you should be able to trust other people. Yeah. Um. Okay, we have to talk about the Greek philosopher sufficient unto himself. That's not his name. That's the quote. Um, you did a little bit of research on this. We didn't do as much research <laughs> as we should have because we literally saw the episode then went right in here. Only but... research I did was, oh, he's a Greek philosopher. <laughs> and you're like, I know because of his name. So I was like, oh. Okay, <laughs> that's all I did. <laughs> I went right. back to watching the episode. <laughs> well, well, we'll do more research this week. Um, yes. I mean, I unfortunately, it's up. not like it's not like Aristotle or um, any other. You, you, I, you, don't get me wrong; he's a famous philosopher, right? Mm -hmm. Do I know offhand what he's known for? No, he's not Socrates to me. He's not Plato. Um, he's he's a little bit more niche. The purpose of philosophy uh, for his philosophy. Wait. Never mind. Keep going. Sorry. This is what his per his perspective on philosophy was to attain happy, tranquil life and um, peace and freedom from fear. What does sufficient onto himself mean for you? You can do it better on yourself. Do it better yourself. Okay. All right. What about you? Um, I always read into too much, especially like the less you give me, like if it was a full paragraph, I'd know what, what it, you know. I'd get the essence, but sufficient onto himself. Yeah, I guess I guess it would be that. Um, he has a poem. This guy, all things are governed by atoms. Interesting. That's uh, Lexi tie-in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, so I guess he fit into this episode more than than we certainly imagined. Um, well, again, we'll we'll do a little bit more research. We just didn't have as much time. But if 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 you're familiar at all, uh, listener viewer, comment below. Yes. Let us know what you actually think. Let us know what you know. Let us know what you think and how it ties in. Um, let us know what you guys th thought of the argument. Um, because, you know, I'm, to be fair, I'm a little bit tired of Tom always being so selfish and, and kind of being this leader. I don't think, I think his decisions are correct yeah. in, in, in the uh, plans that he wants, but at the end of the day, let people have some input. Let people feel like they're a part of this. Yeah, be a team. Yeah. Um, I did write down a question I wanted to ask you. So they're going to space, right? They're going on the moon. Okay. How are they going to deal with the oxygen situation? Where it's all set, don't worry. Okay, cool. I mean, I understood if the bomb went, like Kochi's, and he's like, oh, don't worry. I don't need, I don't really need oxygen. I got it. Don't worry, bro. Well, he can't but... go. That was, that was conveniently inconvenient. Yeah. Oh no, our Volm spyware got hacked into and destroyed because they figured it out. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I was just curious. That's been a huge question even last episode when they're like, oh, we just need to go to the moon. I'm like, oh, you just need a spacesuit because you need oxygen. Well, he's not going outside of the spaceship. But they're going to have to get off the spaceship eventually, aren't they? Okay, but do the Volm and the Ashveni... But what if they have to get off the spaceship? Well, unfortunately, that's not a luxury we can afford. And if they do, they're dead. And that's it. Okay. And uh, the, the, everyone's hope of them returning is gone. Um, but Tom really feels like he's going to make it back. We have just enough battery power to make it back to Earth. Which, uh, you think season five, the, re the, the return from space? <laughs> it could be, like, I was, you know, we still, like, because first and foremost, it's going to be a big mission to get to space. So yeah. I feel like we're not gonna we're not gonna accomplish the mission within the first hour. It's gonna be in the you know maybe let's say at best in the last twenty to thirty minutes, and thirty minutes is stretching it, right? Mm -hmm. 
I feel like season five, the first episode could be the return from space. See who survives, who didn't. That's, that's my early prediction before predictions. And I hope we figure out if the moon's made of cheese or not. It's not. Damn. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the ending episode. The ending events. Because uh, <laughs> Dingen says, stop! No one can go. And we're getting attacked. And then just that little red right. She literally looked like little yeah. red riding hood, and I loved it. The, the way the spaceships were blown up, it reminded me of that um, Space space Invaders. Is that the game? With the spaceships, sure. and you shoot them and go, boop, yeah, I get the old saying. arcade yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of that in, on, in the sky. And then Lexi was the one controlling and destroying them. And she had, a, she had that great moment where she has a father. Yes. Huge turning point. Huge. Because she never called Tom father before. Nope. Now she does. And uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of what people's re initial reaction to it is. Obviously, they're going to be very scared, but they also believe that she's the one who did this, so it's like, okay, it's going to be very weird. Speaking of that, let's get into the Season 4 finale predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right. How's the camp going to receive Lexi? Well, she just saved their butts, so I think they're going to be happy that she's back. Might be a little but sketched they, out, but... Yeah, I think they're going to be skeptical a little bit. Yeah, Anne's going to be like, Lexi! And love uh, her again. Yeah. But the fact that she called Tom father, she's going to get a chance to explain herself. Who all ends up on the ship? Lexi's got to go on the ship, yeah? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's how they get rid of Lexi. I mean, she's going to be able to fly the ship. Right? Cause the, yeah. Okay, gravity. <laughs> she controls gravity, come on. Sure. Does she really need to learn how to fly? No, she's the best flyer, and and I feel like there's there's stowaways. I, like I don't know, maybe it's. I feel like Pope gets on this plane. I feel like too many people are on this plane <laughs> in the shots that we saw. You just really want Pope and Matt to be on that plane. <laughs> I, that's from I what I saw. Like there was a, there was a lot of action, obviously, and so I don't I, know where in space and time people are. I just I don't think Pope is gonna get on plane with Lexi because he doesn't trust her. Granted, he wants to be yeah, a hero. Yeah, but it's a martyr mission anyway, so who cares? Yeah, I, I just, for me, I think what's going to happen is we're going to be left, obviously, with a cliffhanger of who's going to survive. But on that ship is definitely Lexi, so out of, I think there might be three of them. Ben, Lexi, and Hal, because Ben and Lexi have that connection where she trusts Ben. Okay, so what about Tom? Is Anne going to go on the plane? Is the whole is the whole Mason family going on the, on a trip to the moon? Field trip, guys. Hop on. No, I don't think so. I think there's only going to be three of them. But no Anne. No Anne. Anne's going to stay back. Lexi's going to be like, no, mother. Knock her on the head and make her pass out or something. Okay. Because Lexi's got power. She can tell who can come on the plane and who can't. Is this Shit. the end of the war? No, we still have another season. Yeah, but that's that could be the <laughs> aftermath. There's always an aftermath to but the that'd war. That'd be boring. But like we've cut off the power, like we have to. Okay, first off, we we also we we didn't talk about how there's you know nothing going on. All the other countries are pretty much messed up, right? There's no, uh, there's no hope. It's just crawl away and die. And mm -hmm. this is no, you know, the message that we received. Um, so, I think there's still enough for another season, even if this is like it. This was the big turning point. Um, now we just actually have to kill the Ashveni. I don't think the Shveni is going to die in the season finale. I think season five is going to be still a battle, but halfway through will be the whole. What else is big? What could be bigger I than the I'm reactor? Wrong. I don't know. They still have power on the, on the planet. All right. <laughs> I think. I and is Lexi going to die? Yes. Because I don't think she's going to make a return for season five. Because she's. A, she's aging. B, she's, as they said, like, um, you know, even though she gets stronger every time she does this, um, I feel like she's going to just expand so much energy to do this mm -hmm. that she'll just collapse and that'll be it. I think she's going to be the hero that Pope wants to be. She needs to be the hero so people have that hope mm -hmm. for the next season. Fair enough. Uh, well, we're going to have an exciting two hours next week. Um, so we'll be watching. Obviously, you'll be watching. We'll be talking about it so you can listen. But... 
That doesn't mean you can't write in. That doesn't mean you can't comment. We love seeing them. You guys have amazing theories, and we're coming up on on some really exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, where can they follow and speak with you directly, Roya? You guys can talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at HeyRoya. That's H-E-Y-R-O-Y-A. Cool. And uh, what is it? Uh, Nando Vell? Yeah. For Nando? Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. Um, Nando Vell <laughs> on Twitter for Nando Velasquez. And After Buzz TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Let us know what you guys are thinking. Comment below. Comment on iTunes. However you got to get in touch with us. Let us know what you're thinking. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back for the Season 4 finale next Sunday night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz I'll see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>